<laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you don't look like Sean. And you know what? You're right. And you're welcome. My name's Craig. You might have seen me over on the Bikes and Beards channel. Join me today as we discuss drive trains. We're going to talk about drive shafts, belt drives, and chain drives. So if you're in the market for another bike, maybe you're wondering, which do I want? Chain, belt, shaft? Well, honestly, at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. Each one of them has pros, each one of them has cons. We're gonna go over some of those right now. Maybe hopefully help you decide which is right for you depending on your application. Now the manufacturers pretty much have it figured out what system is best for the application and that type of bike and the type of riding that bike is supposed to be doing. So, you know, the argument of like, oh, I wish this bike was shaft drive and it's belt drive or whatever. Yeah, you know, let the engineers figure that stuff out. Here's a great example of a belt drive motorcycle. Now, this is an awesome Buell 25th anniversary 1125R. Now, this, this belt drive system, you're going to see it on all the Harleys, Victories, Indians, Can-Am Spiders are also belt drive. Shaft drive motorcycles are generally found on Japanese and European heavier style cruisers, right? So here we have a beautiful BMW R18. I love this bike. I think it's so cool looking. And uh, the reason I picked this bike is because you get a great view really of the drive shaft and and how this all works now our chain drive system here is attached to this awesome 2020 yamaha mt03 bike super fun bike if you'd like to learn a little bit more about it click on the video right here that we just put out you normally find chain drive systems all the sport bikes are running chain drive other than of course the buell off-road applications are 99 percent chain drive anymore cruiser bikes will still be chain drive you can change the gearing of the bike to have more power down low or more top end speed. Um, you can really dial it in and, and get the bike to perform how you want it and the power where you want it. So in my opinion, shaft drive motorcycles are by far the easiest to maintain. The drive shaft is bringing power and it comes into the worm gear. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a ring and pinion. And then that's driving the hub. So this back here is oil bath. You know, you can check that oil once a year, check it whenever you do an oil change, maybe change it every couple of years or whatever the service manual says. Other than that, uh, you're pretty much maintenance free. Belts have a life expectancy. I think Harley rates, I don't know if I wanna say a lifetime on the belt, but 100,000 miles for sure. Uh, unless you're idiots like us and you take your new Road King on a gravel road and ruin the belt like this. Oh shoot, look at this. Oh no. We got a torn belt. Belt's torn up. Oh crap. A lot of people think it's 100,000 miles and I don't have to worry about it. Well, no, it's not 100,000 maintenance-free miles. Like, there are still some things you have to do. You still need to check your tension. You need to make sure you're aligned and it's tracking straight. You need to make sure there's not stone or debris. And if you do all of that stuff, yeah, you're gonna have a belt that should last you 100,000 plus miles. So that brings us to chain drive and chain drive systems, which in my opinion, require the most amount of maintenance. And here's why. Let's look at a chain a little closer. You have the plates and you have pins and you have the rollers. All of these pieces are individually machined pieces and it's all moving. So the chain actually has way more moving pieces and parts than either of the other two systems, right? And that requires maintenance. Moving parts on motorcycles require maintenance. That's pretty much just a general rule of thumb, right? You need to keep them clean, lubricated, properly adjusted, and you need to keep them aligned. If you do all that, the chain will last for a really long time. You know, like on our dirt bikes, I'll go through a, a chain and sprocket every, every season for sure. Here, we'll take a look and see a couple of the ways that these chains wear. You have the pin that goes through the plates and through the roller, and that's where the teeth of the sprocket fit in. So the force on the teeth is actually pulling on each individual pin, and that creates wear. So if you look really close, can you see that flex? It should not be able to do that. What that is, is that's taking up all the slop between the pins and the plates. 
this is a bad chain I pulled off of something and that is, you know, it's just, it's worn out, right? Now, one of the things we can talk about is the power delivery of the three systems. Shaft drive is pretty smooth. You will lose more power with the shaft drive system versus the other two. But you know, on, on bigger, heavier cruiser bikes like this, it really doesn't matter. It's not like you're gonna notice. Now the belt drive system, they are quiet, they are smooth. It's a great option. Harley, Victory, Indian, Can-Ant, they, they all have it figured out. Like I said, I mean, these things are lasting 100,000 plus miles. Now the chain drive system isn't as smooth on the power delivery as the other two options. It is also a little noisier. One of the ways manufacturers or guys putting together race applications and some supermoto stuff and different areas there they add what they call the cush drive and the cush drive really helps take out the abruptness of a chain drive system and kind of smooth out that that power delivery the other nice thing with the chain drive is you're not losing as much power between the engine and the rear wheel as you do with the belt or the the shaft drive now that we covered the basics on the three different systems, let's give them a ranking and see how they stack up to each other. So for longevity, I'm putting shaft drive in first place. They just don't wear out. Second is belt, third is chain. Maintenance, I'm saying the easiest to maintain is a shaft drive. Second is gonna be belt, again third, is gonna be chain. Power delivery, I'm gonna break into three different sections. One, parasitic loss. Two, the smoothness of the power, and three, quietness. So for parasitic loss, this is where the chain is gonna win. Chain is gonna eat the least amount of power between the engine and the road out of these three systems. Next is gonna be belt, followed by the shaft drive. Shaft drive is gonna eat up the most amount of power between the engine and the road. Now, when it comes to putting that power to the ground and doing it smoothly, I think the shaft drive wins, followed by the belt. Lastly, the chain drive system. So the third way I broke up the power delivery is in quietness. I think shaft drive motorcycles are definitely quieter than chain drive motorcycles and belt drive motorcycles are also quieter than chain drive motorcycles. I think it's really a toss up between shaft drive and belt drive, but definitely chain drive is gonna be the loudest. The next category is what I'm calling tunability. And this is my favorite category. The reason I like it, is because I like to mess around with motorcycles. Chain drive is hands down by far the best system to have. Now you can do some gearing changes on belt drive bikes. It's not quite as economical, it's not quite as easy, but it is possible. Now I don't wanna say it's impossible to change the gearing on a shaft drive motorcycle, but really honestly, it would be so cost prohibitive. It, 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 it just, people just don't do it. Don't even worry about it. It's not gonna happen unless you have a lot of money. It's honestly pretty irrelevant. The mission for these bikes doesn't really require that. It's really just not feasible to do. Does it really matter what your bike has or what the bike has that you're going to look at? Honestly, not really. Unless you're planning on doing certain racing or competition applications, it's not that big of a deal. If you're buying an American V-Twin bike to go race King of the Baggers, you already know you're swapping the belt drive for a chain drive system. Now, a lot of people ask me, what's my favorite? What's my preference? And I'm gonna be 100% obvious. I don't know if I have a favorite. I let the engineers figure out what the application requires and I don't really complain about it. Now, if you're gonna hold me down and make me pick one, I guess I'm gonna pick chain. And I'm gonna pick chain because of the tunability and getting power to the ground. For the type of riding that I'm normally doing, whether it be track days or days out on the dirt bike and, and in the woods and things, I want to be able to change my gearing to suit what I'm doing. It's something I enjoy doing. And as fellow motorcycle tinkers, I know you feel the same way. If you like this kind of content and you want to get super nerdy on some bike stuff, let us know down in the comments. Thanks for joining us. Later.